side of the room, otherwise they're going to kill me later on. Yes. <laughs> Since you brought up chess, uh, my question is, in a lot of your work, or your readings, it seems to me there is a certain rhythm or movement that takes place. And, and I get the, at the sense that when you're, talk, when you're discussing matter and materialism, there's also a, a sense of liberty or liberation. And, and what is your viewpoint of liberation? Liberation, liberty. Well, clearly, I mean, again, you know, and this is something that my students are going to understand much better. I spent just 18 hours trying to tell my students, not about that, but about let's start recovering the richness of the concrete. Let's never talk about the market in general. Let's talk about marketplaces and trading areas. Let's talk about the state in general. Let's talk about specific government structures with a specific histories. And so I cannot say anything important about liberation in general because reified generalities are essences, unfortunately. On the other hand, we can say something like this. Once agriculturalists back 10,000 years they started generating surpluses and, and their, their relationship became less egalitarian and the surplus now began managed by an authority, you have immediately questions as to whether to obey or not to obey that authority. You, have, you, you are immediately being constrained now by relationships of obedience or subservience to an authority. Then authorities began multiplying. At first it was just ecclesiastical authorities and political authorities. But today we have medical authorities, psychiatric authorities, insurance company acting as authorities on your future, uh, school authorities, prison authorities. The number of, co of organizations that have an authority structure that constrains whomever is there is, is expanding. And so clearly, with what we, we, you, to recast your question is, you know, how should we face authority these days? You know, because that would be one sense of liberation when you begin questioning the legitimacy of that particular authority, or when you begin questioning the particular methods of enforcement that that particular authority is using. And so, to the extent, you know, a, a, for instance, another, just to give you a, a slightly different example, if that authority happens to be a central state, then you have to invent methods to extract rights from the state one at a time. Not liberation, but the right to vote, the right to, to, to uh, 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 collectively bargain with your bosses, the right to go to school, the right not to be segregated in certain neighborhoods. Not liberation in general, specific concrete rights that have been extracted from the, from the state or from government organizations one by one by social justice movements going back to workers' movements beginning in 1750, by then the civil rights movements, by women's movements, by, uh, by gay movements, by a variety of movements, each of which has extracted one right at a time, one concrete right at a time. If any of those movements had said, we won't stop until we get full liberation, they wouldn't have done anything at all, because full liberation is too vague to mean anything. Right? And so, again, this materialism that I'm trying to convince you guys of here, the loses materialism is one that doesn't have or shouldn't have reified generalities. Society as a whole, power in general. What is power in general? I, you know, Foucault sometimes amazes me. You know, before San Francisco, you were so bright. What did they do to you, man? What did they do to you? Buy your power. Power in general. What is power? There's no such thing as power in general. There is. Capacities to affect and be affected, <coughs> for instance, two large corporations may enter into a conflict of interest, say Ford versus Toyota, and the power then is your capacity to prevail in a conflict of interest situation. That's one form of power. Another form of power is, you know, how do you organize bodies in space in a hospital with the, the, the different diseases in different rooms, with nurses now being able to exercise authority over the, over the patient, saying, stay in your bed, with doctors saying this is more often, you know, the, what Foucault describes in Discipline and Punish, how enforcement practices became subtler, you know, more panopticonian kind of way. That I can understand, because it's concrete. 
what biopower or power in general. Let's fight power or down with the man. I, I, I just can't even think in those terms. But you understand how this connects with the rest of the world, right? Yeah. Yes, I'm gonna have to take this one here because this is the last one. Okay. <laughs> I have a uh, comment and a question. Um, in In order to be consistent with what you're talking about, with facing a sort of authority, of Dan's question, and inhabiting your body fully with senses, you, you just mentioned making all these machines, um, which seems, this is just my comment, it seems a little contradictory in terms of actually inhabiting your body and empowering your body um, in terms of investigating the possibilities of your own body outside of the realm of those who control it potentially through machines. So well, but no, I don't think that either microscopes or telescopes are disempowering. On the other hand, they are extensions <coughs> of the site, thanks to which, say, Pasteur was able to show that cholera was a bacterium. And there were German doctors, no, no, no insult, no, no, no who, who, in, who refused to accept that cholera was a bacterium. They used to drink glasses of cholera. You know, and die for the following day. It was important for us to establish that microorganisms are real, you know, and it is still important in the context of what he was saying, because look, if we don't if we think that like Bruno Latour sometimes does, that the word bacterium invented the creature bacterium, <coughs> sometimes he says things like that. And if he, and if that was true, then that means that antibiotics only work for people who have the concept bacteria. Right? <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't. Why would they work with? And so let's take all the antibiotics from the third world and from all those places that have diseases, but they don't have the word bacterium. They don't. We are co colonizing them medically because they are in fact they don't get sick from the same things we get sick. I would say that would be so irresponsible. You know, to deny, and, and so paternalistic on our part, only we Westerners understand what bacteria. Bacteria are real. Sometimes doctors <coughs> make a mistake and say it was a virus when it was a bacteria. They say a bacteria when it was a fungus. They think it's one of those when in fact, like, mad cow disease is neither. Mad cow disease is a misfolded protein, a prion. So science is limited. And it always needs to be taken with a grain of salt because there will always be new discoveries of new causes. So you don't trust scientists, you know, blindly. But to think that science, because it was either produced by males or produced by whites or produced by Westerners or produced by Christians, is therefore not valid outside of those spheres, is to me highly irresponsible. And the consequences that would have in terms of world health and, and help to poorer peoples to cure diseases and so on would be tremendous.